All right, AI startup Reflexivity uses AI tools to help make investment decisions for client portfolios. Joining us now, the company's co-founder and CEO, Jan Salagi. Good morning, Jan. Good morning. Is it Jan or John? Jan. Jan. Um, great to see you. How does this work? And how deep is this model in terms of the data and how far it goes back? So our goal is to be able to really leverage both the AI technology and cloud compute to give a complete health check to every security every day and kind of give you a sense of, is the market vulnerable to a correction? How is the macro environment mm -hmm. relevant for this? Um, we understand that every business obviously depends on its own fundamentals, but also the context in which it operates. So we try to give you a kind of a complete compilation and analysis every morning. How good is this? It's I mean, very good. You backtested, I assume. Yes, but the goal really is to give an analyst or a portfolio manager this kind of superpower, right? I think we always want to go to the data, but it's often tedious to do it, build a spreadsheet every time and so on. And so this makes it a lot easier. So how much does this replace some of the functions on Wall Street? I mean, if you're talking about building models and spreadsheets, yes. that sounds to me like a lot of the research that is done on Wall Street. Yes. So the goal for us is to build an autonomous investment analyst. That is the ultimate goal. Mm. On the way there, I think that we have created a lot of technology that helps you with things that when you're logging into a Bloomberg terminal, feel like they'll take you a long time to do. And so if you can just say, this is the question I'd like to answer and rely on the engine to go and find the data and then run the analysis, it, you take something that would have taken two hours and do it in two minutes. So can you give us an example? Yeah, for example, let's say that right now, as you guys were having a discussion around, you know, growth for a specific company and so on, let's say your question is next year, we're going to have an environment of possibly higher inflation, higher interest rates, pro-growth environment. What are the securities that in the past have done well within a certain sector and are not as sensitive or have market beta below one? Okay. In about 30 seconds, the system come, can come back and say, like, here is based on 12 or 15 past episodes, the selection of securities that will correspond to what you're looking for. Okay, so you, you just outlined some of the parameters. Does it take into uh, you know, consideration the context? Uh, we're in a declining interest rate environment or a rising interest rate environment. We are, you know, what the macro is yes. as well. Yeah, so exactly that. That is mm -hmm. exactly what it does. It tries to find parallels from the past to give you a sense of what the price pattern going forward could look like. Wow. So how do you envision this? Is this going to be a bulk, uh, an additional sort of service layered on top of another platform? Is this a standalone? Do you sell subscription? Like, how do you monetize this? So our clients are primarily mm -hmm. top hedge funds who are using this as a kind of an intelligent overlay on top of all of the different data sources they have access to. And so through a platform like ours, they can actually connect them and make sense of the whole as opposed to switching between different platforms all the time. I'm it's amazing what, it's what amazing. can be done it's these days. And that's yeah. the question. The question just is how accurate it's going to be. That's the thing I just can't figure out. And, you don't, and we don't really know. So I think what you are able to see over time is that you can obviously look at how some of the recent predictions have worked out, right? If you look at the market as a whole. Right. So, for example, it very correctly called the peak in July. It very correctly called the false rally that we had right after that. But then, again, correctly called the bottom. So because it creates this completely independent assessment of each security. Okay, but what does it get wrong? You told us all the stuff it got right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. So, for example, just really recently, it turned bullish a little bit too early. Um, we recently had, when the, Fed, when the Fed came and said, like, look, we're not going to do four cuts, we're going right. to do two. That was something that was a catalyst that actually saw the market sell off first, probably big sell. Do, do you understand why it got it wrong? Now that you, you know how you put it together? Because I think these are always probabilistic assessments. So it's right. not even that it's wrong. It's saying like, okay, with 70% you know, confidence, this right. is what's going to happen. There's still the 30% where it doesn't happen. How far are we from a day where you attach this to just automated trading? So based on what the model spits out, it executes a trade. And so therefore, you've sort of supplanted this whole, the whole ecosystem. Yes. Look, I think that's certainly coming, right? It's hard to say that there's something so special about human intelligence that we should be better there's at trading. There's, it's hard to say that there's something so special as human intelligence. No, what I mean to we, say is that if you are able to give the system so much compute power right. and the intelligence continues to improve, at some point it's not crazy to think that the systems will be better at trading than humans are. So entire trading floors. Just bots. Gone. I mean, this is not 
tomorrow, obviously, right? But sure. I think. But, what are we, what, but predict out. What are we talking about here? I, so everything that we have so far forecast had happened faster than we expected, right? No, so, I know, but I'm just saying if you're if you're a real estate guy in New York City <laughs> yes. and you own uh, buildings that are being... If you're a trader in New York City. No, but if you're a trader in New York City and you're li living on one of these trading floors watching us right now, how yes. long are you going to do that for? So I would say that the horizon that you're probably looking at is somewhere between five and ten years, where I think you'll have a meaningful impact from systems like this, right? It doesn't mean that it's going to replace it entirely, but you're going to start to see the impact of this. So it'll be better in certain areas than in other areas, depending on the complexity of the instrument, depending on the amount of data that you have available for some things versus others. Private markets, for example, will be harder because it's just not as easy to get the data yeah. as you are for public markets.